Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets back with another video tutorial on java programming especially the core java programming part so in this video tutorial i'm going to be explaining you the entire execution process of a java program so in the previous video tutorial we saw the first java program that was the hello world program we also installed the jdk and saw the netbeans ide at a overview level so if you have missed that video you can check it out in this playlist so with that being said let's get started with today's topic Okay so as you can see on the screen we have a huge diagram which is basically the entire execution process of a java program so if you have seen my c++ programming execution process this is pretty much different compared to that because java programming or java program is compiled as well as interpreted so both compiler and interpreter takes part in the entire execution process and we'll go through each of these step by step so let's start off so starting off with this part so this small rectangular box yellow box so here you have our java code so this first box so this is the first step wherein we actually type in our java code so you can see i have typed in abc.java so this abc.java is our java file which has our java code okay so for step 1 we first actually write down our java code and save that as a java file the next step is to invoke the java compiler So in the previous video tutorial we also saw how to invoke the java compiler using the java c command so you can see over here java c so when i type in java c in the cmd or when i hit the run in the netbeans id the compiler is executed or the compiler is invoked so this is the step 2 you can say when the compiler is invoked the compiler will compile this entire abc.java file and convert it to a byte code that is the abc.class file so remember when we compiled we were getting a class file which had some gibberish language which we could not read so of course the compiler will check for syntax errors and different errors that we have and if there are no errors then it will generate that bytecode otherwise it will throw us an error so this red arrow indicates that it goes back to the first step otherwise it would go to the third stage you can say so this third stage is the bytecode stage and these first three stages are the stages of the compile time or the compilation stages so this yellow box the yellow dotted box is the compile time scenario so these three steps happen during the compile time now when we invoke the java program to actually run the byte code so when we say java space abc remember we executed our program saying java space my first class right so when i type in java space abc in the command prompt now this byte code that is abc dot class is loaded by the class loader so class loader is again a program inside the jvm so you can see i have drawn a pink box which essentially is the jvm jvm stands for java virtual machine and we already know what java virtual machine is right we've seen that in the second video tutorial so class loader is again another program which loads this abc dot class in the jvm and then another step happens so you can consider this as the step number so java space abc can be considered as step number 4 this can be considered as step number 5 that is the class loader stage then there is one more program that is bytecode verifier which checks the bytecode if there is any errors or bugs inside the bytecode so we can consider this as step number 6 and this is all happening inside the jvm okay so after this the interpreter is invoked now the basic difference between a compiler and an interpreter is the compiler compiles the complete file so if the abc.java file has five lines of code the compiler will take those entire five lines and convert them all together in abc.class however interpreter interprets each line one by one okay so let me just show you what exactly happens so if there is a code okay which is 1 2 3 and 4 lines okay so these are four different lines of code so when it goes through compiler the compiler takes these entire four lines and converts it to the class file okay so the class file would also have four lines or extra lines depending upon how the compilation happens but when you have a code of say for example four lines 1 2 3 4 and it goes through the interpreter so i'm denoting i for interpreter what happens is the interpreter first takes the first line it converts it and transfers it for the processor to execute then it moves on to the second line it takes that line and it transfers it for the cpu to execute then it moves on to the next line and it does not wait till the entire program is read it just goes line by line so that is a basic difference between a compiler and a interpreter so after the bytecode verifier verifies the class file it is transferred to the interpreter or the jit compiler so this jit stands for just in time so this is a just in time compiler okay so it is a compiler 
which is a special type of compiler and we'll talk about it in detail in a minute. As of now, just understand that the bytecode verifier process transfers the code to the interpreter or the JIT compiler depending upon some conditions which we'll obviously see in a minute. So after the interpreter interprets these line by line code in the abc.class, it is transferred to the OS or the hardware and executed. So it goes out outside the JVM and transfers that instructions line by line for the OS or the underlying hardware to execute. Now this OS can be Windows OS, Mac OS, Linux OS and depending upon that OS, the JVM also varies, right? So we've seen that JVM, JRE and JDK is not portable. However, this bytecode, this bytecode is portable. So after six, you can consider this as seven step. And if the JIT compiler is invoked, of course, JIT compiler is not always invoked. So depending upon if it is invoked or not, if JIT is invoked, this would be step number seven and this would be step number eight. And then lastly, you can see this is step number nine, wherein the output is shown on the console or depending upon what kind of application it is. If it is a Windows application, then the GUI is being loaded. So this was the overall execution process and we did not talk about JIT compiler. So let's talk about this JIT compiler. I'm going to explain to you what exactly happens. Okay, so for understanding JIT compiler, we have to take two cases, case number one and case number two. Okay, so let's talk about case number one. Okay, so we do not have a JIT compiler in case number one. So just assume that we do not have this entire part in the execution process. We have line of code. So you can see one, two, three, four, five line of code, right? So one, two, three, four and five line of code. Let's assume that this code is already a class code. So you can say ABC dot class. So we have compiled the Java program and this is the stage that we are at. And now we are transferring this ABC dot class into the JVM to the interpreter. So let's assume that we are at this stage over here. So this interpreter is this interpreter, which we are talking about. And now what the interpreter is going to do is the interpreter is going to go line by line, right? So the interpreter is going to go on line number one, generate the corresponding output for line number one and transfer it for the CPU to execute. Then the interpreter is going to go on line number two, generate the output and transfer this to the CPU, right? So this line A is equal to five corresponds to this line, which is a computer code. So we are not able to read it. It is just assume that this is a machine code. So some random code is there, just like what we saw in the abc.class file. It's going to be zeros and ones, right? So machine language is comprised of zeros and ones and hexadecimal values. Similarly, then for line number three, it has this line number three. Then for line number four, it has line number four and for five, it has five. So now notice that your abc.class file is a huge file. It has thousands of lines of code. So the interpreter will go line by line, right? So it will take some time. So there is a overhead over here, which means that the interpretation is a little bit slower than compiler because compiler takes all these lines together and directly converts it to the output. However, interpreter goes line by line. So if the number of lines increase, the time taken by the interpreter also increases, right? So this was case number one. Now what I wanted to actually show in case number one is if you see the last two lines, the line number four and five, you can see I have copied the last line two times. So B equals to seven and B equal to seven comes two times, which means that this, this is an extra line, which is basically not of any use, right? We are creating a variable B and we are assigning value seven to it. And then we are again doing it one more time. So let's say, a programmer is not a very expert programmer and he does this by mistakely and he just makes copies of this n number of times. So you can see it is repeated over here. But since there is no smart compilation over here, the interpreter considers this as a separate line and creates the same output for the same line. So you can see even the output is same over here two times and this is unnecessary, right? It should have been just one line and you could have saved one line of instruction, right? So now let's see case two, what happens in case two. So in case two, we have JIT compiler, which is involved. So this ABC dot class first goes to the JIT compiler. Now this JIT compiler analyzes this entire code. Since it is a compiler, it goes through the entire code and it sees if there is some redundant lines, which can be excluded. So it finds that, okay, this line is extra, which if it removes the output won't change. So what it does is it excludes this line. It ex excludes this line and it transfers only these first four lines to the interpreter. You can see this arrow. So the interpreter now assumes that the abc.class file has only four lines. So this is first line, second line, third line and fourth line. That's about it. And it doesn't know that the JIT compiler has excluded this line. So now the output will also be only of four lines, one, two, three and four. And the interpreter won't generate this fifth line of code. 
for the CPU to execute. So and this would be transferred to the CPU or the OS to execute. So you can see that one line was saved, right? So it means that it is optimized and more efficient. So this is where JIT compiler comes into picture. Now this was just an example. Imagine you have thousands of lines of code and there are so many redundant codes that we type which are basically not used at times. So during that time when JIT compiler is invoked, now this invocation of JIT compiler is totally dependent upon what kind of JIT is used. Some JIT compilers are very aggressive and they are called every time and some are not. So depending upon the coding and the inbuilt nature of the JIT compiler, it is being invoked. So that is not in our hands. But depending upon the huge size, a JIT compiler can be very efficient and it can optimize our code and make the processing and execution very fast. So I hope you now understand what is just in time compiler and why it is called just in time because it is called at the very last moment when the interpretation is going to happen. So before just the interpreter, the JIT compiler quickly analyzes the code and removes some extra redundant code out of it so that the interpretation can happen faster. Imagine you have 1000 lines of code and out of that 500 are redundant, right? So which means that the execution will happen in half the time and you will save a lot of time which will give you an optimized output. So this was a little bit theory on just in time compiler and JIT compiler and I hope you have understood it very clearly now how it works and we've also seen the entire execution part which you can see by these nine steps over here that I've drawn and this is a very important video tutorial because this is one of the most favorite questions in interviews as well as in exams. So you'll probably not see these happening in real time when we actually type in the programming code but this is what happens behind the scenes and it is very important for you to know because these are the fundamentals and basics and they are pretty much asked during examinations as well as interview questions. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the entire execution process of Java program. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.